All right, this is the Kubernetes uh, CKA exam and chat GDP. I do a certification, I do a certification every month and and it's a lot of fun for me. And so you'll see these different topics as I work on these different certifications as well. Today, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do an intro and icebreaker with about the CKA, the Certified Kubernetes Ex Administrator's Exam. How you can use chat GDP to help you in your studies. We'll do a number of examples of that. I will say that I am using chat GDP for my preparations of all my exams, and it's cutting my study time in by half. So you will find it to be a very efficient tool. Uh, when ChatTDP first came out, it did not do Kubernetes, uh, but I use ChatTDP for it does Kubernetes very well. Probably last week I wrote, I wrote hundreds of lines of Kubernetes. I only found one error, and that was an adjacent string. So it's getting better. Also, we'll talk about ten tips for passing the exam, things you need to know when you take the exam, and also ChatGDP story time. So this is something that's coming. You're going to see more of, and you'll see me do more of in the future. All right, let's keep going. A little bit about myself. I am a nuclear physicist. I haven't been saying it at the beginning, but I am. And so when you get, you're going to start hearing about quantum computers, <laughs> of course, something I'm going to be passionate about. Uh, on the heels of AI, okay, which we're starting to experience that revolution, you're going to see um, uh, quantum computing in about five years take over. And it's going to be like working with someone with a 200 IQ is AI right now. Working with quantum computers would be like working with someone with an IQ of 27,000. I mean, it's just unbelievable about what we're about to see in this environment. I do have about 28 certifications in AWS, Azure, Google, and Terraform. And I'm, am I, I am a Microsoft certified trainer. I have had various careers through the year. Right now, I'm manager of training and documentation at my company. Previous, I was, I'd worked for the EPA, the government, education, military. I was a United States uh, Air Force captain at, uh, for about five years. Uh, with that said, uh, we do have some upcoming events. Uh, today, we're doing the redo. So I had made a mistake about, oh, uh, two weeks ago. And basically, I just put the wrong time in, and uh, everyone came at the wrong time. <laughs> so I, I decided to do a redo. Um, I don't like doing redos, but for this this one, there were so many people signed up, I wanted to do that. So here we are. And I think it's a better redo. So there you have it. Uh, next, uh, in about two weeks, we're going to do ACING, the AWS Certified Advanced Networking Exam. And uh, AWS is something I have started off with. It was my first love when it came to cloud computing. And I will we'll have a real good lesson on that. For about two months, we're going to actually look at Python. QSKIT, which is basically IBM's uh, API for doing quantum computing. And ChatGDB, how you can come up to speed on those three. Then we'll do the IBM Certified Developer for Quantum Computing. Quantum computing is coming. It's not quite here yet, but it's coming. You're going to start hearing more about it. And there is a certification out there. So we will look at it. Then we'll look at the AWS Practitioner Solutions Architect Exam and Professional. We're going to compare the three. And after that, we'll do Mastering HashiCorp Security Automation. So you should have some Terraform under your belt, right? So Terraform is a very important language. It allows you to build infrastructure between the three uh, big ones, like Azure, you know, AWS or Google, you can build Terraform code and transfer it from system to system. Uh, then we'll have a couple of months of uh, BI data analyst stuff. So if you like data analytics, you like data, that'll be yours. And then hopefully we'll get some people to do some presentations. If you're interested in do that, let me know. And if not, that's okay. Uh, but we may be sandwiching some things in between these. So this I'm always updating and adding. Uh, just a little bit about the quantum exam, because I am a nuclear physicist. You're going to hear me talk about this more and more. But I, uh, the, the IBM quantum exam for the uh, developer, is, is I gave a little bit of information on it, since we will be spending two months on this. Uh, and there's a nice intro to quantum computing. If you don't know what it is, you can watch that intro. Sorry, I accidentally clicked that. Then you can learn more about Qiskit here. They have an entire YouTube channel on Qiskit, so they're really trying to get people into it. They show you, here's the certification if you want to find out more about it. And here's the uh, IBM uh, En-ROAD, because you can actually run a real quantum computer for free with IBM. There you go. Pretty nice service. With that said, I'm going to give you my standard introduction that actually has interestingly changed over the few years. I used to start off with like coding today is like hand stitching of yesterday. The AI sewing machine is coming, I used to say. It is now here. And in five years, no one will be coding the way they're coding now. I promise you. In five years, machines will be doing most of the coding. So you need to think about how you're going to shape your future to meet what's coming. Now, I've been in computers for <clears throat> many, many years. 
So I've seen many transitions like this where technologies have come and di died and, and more have come. They call, call this an S curve. So you really need to learn where that when that curve begins to go down, another technology takes over. You really need to more than ever ride that S curve. So if you're not learning AI, if you're not working with AI, pay close attention. And I'm going to show you how it can change your workflow, especially when it comes to studying for these exams. All right, with that said, uh, we have learned to put human intelligence in a box. And that's essentially what you're doing. You're interacting with human intelligence in a multidimensional space. A lot of what we're doing is called generative neural nets. And we got this idea from gaming. And that's when things begin to get more realistic. With that said, along with that, cool. of course, when we started doing um, uh, parallel processing on video cards. So we used to do neural nets on like a linear GPU and it's one after another. But now we, when we learn we could parallel process everything, process everything, you know, AI began to take off. And NVIDIA, they're building these supercomputers. They're really investing. I think they're now a trillion dollar company. With that said, I want to promise you that AI will not take your job. No, it won't. But people who use AI will. So I'm just as stern as I can tell you, start learning AI. If you're not a prompt engineer yet, it's time to get started because this is the tech. It's like it's like the invention of fire when it comes to IT. And we'll skip the slide. And, and of course, you know, you get the sci-fi, does it end well? You have all these, you know, predictions of how horrible, you know, these computers are going to take over and they're going to become super intelligent and they're going to kill us all. That's not what's going to happen. Where uh, a few years ago, they had these biped drones. Now they have jet drones that show you how fast the technology is evolving and how people are using this technology to gain a military advantage. That's the scary part. With that said, we'll leave that doomsday stuff and we'll go to, to something that's more important that I started asking myself as soon as the AI came along was, well, what is value? Because a lot of stuff that was hard to do that I found, you know, made me valuable or made me money, AI can do in just a few clicks. And I'll give you an example. I, I had someone ask me a question the other day and they said, well, I don't know how to do that. I don't think it's possible. And they well, send me what you have. And in five minutes, I ran it through AI, sent it back to them. And that would have taken me all day to do. I did it in five minutes. So what has happened is knowledge creation has become exposed by this technology, which means a lot of us are in the business of creating knowledge, which includes coding, means we're going to be challenged in the future to really master these technologies to continue working. That's just the, the straight up of it all. And what you, what adds to your value is your ability to sculpt. So think of it as a tool. And you're maybe creating a sculpture and you're putting it at different places of that sculpture and you know what's going to come out. It doesn't. AI doesn't have a gut feeling. It only has what's in its knowledge bank, what's in, it, what's in its multidimensional trained space. If it's not there, then it's most likely going to lie to you. It's going to try to convince you that it's correct when it's not, because it's a natural language processor. It knows how to talk to people really well. But with that said, it's getting smarter, a lot smarter. All right, so let's start off with the icebreaker. If you could have a superpower that helps you solve a recurring IT problem, what would that superpower be and why? So I put a few examples down here for some of you guys. Cyber uh, security threats, impenetrable shield creation. Yeah, there you go. And number four, look at that budget constraints. Well, you, maybe you have the minus touch. Anything you touch turns to gold. So think about that. What is the thing that really irks you? What is the thing you need to work on the hardest? And what kind of superpower would you need to overcome that? So if you could have a superpower that helps you solve a recurring IT problem, what would that superpower be and why? Who wants to take a stab at that? With that said, uh, the CKA exam uh, is basically a two-hour exam. Uh, it has uh, five domains, cluster architecture, installation, configuration, about 25%, workloads and scheduling, 15% services and networking, 20%, storage, 10%, and troubleshooting, 30%. It takes a 66 to pass. And if you've never taken a, a Kubernetes exam, thank God they have a free retake. Because once you get in and start playing around with that clunky environment, you go, well, thank God there's a free retake. Because the environment, we're going to talk a little about how it was clunky to take the exam. So I'll let you know about that in a few moments. Uh, be uh, be uh, aware that exam questions can be attempted in any order. You can go back and forth. And exact questions do have a weight, so make sure you don't get stuck on a, stuck on a small weight. With that said, I'm going to go right into a study plan for you guys that you that will help you pass the exam. As a matter of fact, if you follow this exam study plan, I promise you that you will pass. 
Um, but it's going to take a lot of time. You need to master it. So no matter where you go on the web and no matter uh, who you read on, on, and there's tons of information on people who have passed the exam, they always mention Mom Shed Manabath's Udemy course. And he actually has three Udemy courses. He has a Vinegator's course, he has a developer's course, and he has an admin's course, and they're excellent. We're going to watch a portion of it today. So we'll actually go look at one of his courses and see, see how it feels so you can get a feel for it. So if you're going to take any of these exams, you probably need to take a look at his course. Okay, I'm going to say that because everyone says that, all right? So just that's, and I, and I could tell you from experience, yes. With that said, I'm going to give you my top 10 tips. Also, there's a killer SH that comes along with the exam. You want to make sure you take those, and they have some realistic questions, and they give you solutions. Addition, if you need more to work on, and you and someone mentioned they'd like to see a, an exam dump, this is the closest you're going to get to, they're not the exact exam questions, but as close as you're going to get on an exam day is the ultimate Kubernetes by Cloud Code. And we'll take a look at Cloud Code's um, um, website, and that is by Momshed Moneybeth, by the way. And if you're doing DevOps, I mean Cloud Code is a place you want to live, okay? With that said, I, I, I put um, a number of these links that you can go to, but I want to also say, when it comes to these Udemy courses, wait for the deals. You can go there, and a course can be $124 or even $200. And if you wait for a deal, which they always running deals on Udemy, you can buy that same course for $19. And I've had that happen to me where I went and spent a lot of money for a course. And the next week it was like $10. Like, really? So just make sure that you're aware of that. I want to say that the test itself, the CKS test, is, is really clunky. And so uh, one of the issues I had when I took the exam is that whenever I clicked on something, it would take a while for the screen to refresh. It would be spinning. And so I probably lost about a quarter of my time just waiting for refresh to occur. So I thought, wow, you know, I want to go back to a testing center. Forget this. And um, that's why I want to tell you is when you go into this exam, you really want to master these areas. You want to have your stuff down. And if you do, I think there's enough time to do the exam. It's just that you know, expect that clunkiness with the exam. And so I, I even had some issues with copy and paste. And there's one issue I had where I'd click it and keep repeating letters across the screen. So I thought, wow, this is really nuts. So um, maybe you didn't have the same experience with the exam, but I thought, wow, you know, that's why I'm glad there's a retake because, uh, you know, if you, you're not used to that environment, it's like, wow, you get used to the environment, what you need to go in and learn and how fast and what you need to master. So there won't be a lot of time in a sense to, and, and it's, you know, and it, the the uh, browser that you can go to to use Kubernetes docs, you know, it's just within the screen, so it's small. So you got it's not easy to scroll either. So you got to really make sure you know where you're going and you have your stuff down. And I'm gonna give you some tips on passing this exam here in a moment. Okay. All right. With that said, I would actually like to actually go to the Mom Shed um Udemy course and actually show you um, what it looks like and actually do a section for you on deployments. So you can see it. Okay. So just a few things. When you go there, there typically will be a video about the the, um, the subject. So there'll be a video on deployments. And then you might have a certification tip, and then you have a test. And we're going to go and do one of his tests. And then when you do the test on deployment, at the end of it, there'll be a solution. So if you don't get it right, you can actually go through the solutions. And of course, one of the really important things you want to be able to do in this exam is to do the dry run. So I'll give you an example of dry run when I actually do the deployments example. So let's go and take a look at the course. All right, let's scroll this up real quick. So I'm in deployment. So, and you probably don't see this screen right here yet. But so we'll go there in a moment. But here's the deployment slides. Here's the certification tip. Here's the practice test. And then you can watch the solution to see if you got it right. We'll go ahead and click on the practice test. And when you do buy the course, he does give you a free voucher for his for this course. So you can actually do these do these these uh, practice tests. Going to go right to his code code cloud. Okay. And I'm I'm going to have to sign in. I actually am a member of his site, so give me a moment. Okay. And so he has the and this is um uh, pretty much just a little prompt here, and he's he's got all the questions, and he'll have eleven questions that you go through. And the first thing it asks is how many pods are exist in the system. Now, one of the things I like to do is I use the K alias. Okay, I don't write kubectl. I use K. And if you go into the CK exam, you use the K alias. Don't don't type in kubectl. 
And with that said, um, I, I just want to get Poe. So how many pods are there? So I use Poe, which is basically the shorthand notation for pod. So I like shorthand notation. We'll talk about it in a moment. It says there's zero. So there's zero. So I ask you another. So it just gets you warmed up and say how many replica sets are in there. So I go, okay, once again, as I use the alias for coop cuddle. And as opposed to typing, you know, get at replica sets, as opposed to typing replica sets, I use the shorthand notation RS. And once again, there's zero here. So let's click zero. No, you don't have to set up the alias. The alias is already there, and you'll find the K alias is also in the CK exam. Yeah. So with that said, how many deployments exist on the system? So let's go ahead and see on deployments. So I go K, get deploy. And I just tabbed on that. And so hit, I, I like tab completion as well. So there's zero. Yeah, there we go. How many deployments exist on the system now? So basically, it's done some work. And let's see if there's any deployments now. And there is one. It's called the front end deployment. It has four pods, but none are ready. So there's one deployment. Okay. If you have a question, feel free to ask. How many replica sets exist now? So that's okay. Get replica sets. RS. See, I'm using that shorthand notation. We'll look at it in a moment. There's one replica set. So let's go ahead and put one. All right. And it's going to ask you how many pods exist in the system now. So this K get po. Once again, you're going back and you're just looking at it again. I actually see four pods. All right, with that said, you see I'm at the bottom of the screen. I want to go back to the top, so I'll just hit a clear to bring me back to the top. There you go, I'm at the top again. Out of the four pods, how many are ready? I think I didn't see any ready, so let's see if I got that right. Yep, and then we're ready. And now you're going to get more detail. So what image is used to create the pods in the new deployment? Now, there's two ways to do this. So I can go K, um, get deployment. Get, I want to take a look at that. And the name of that deployment is front end. So I could go K, edit deployment front end. That's one way of doing it. And so I can actually look at the actual code for that deployment. Okay. And so I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And we can see the image for that deployment is BusyBox AA8. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it. Okay. And this is a way that typically people typically do this is they go, okay, describe. A deployment, and then you'll put uh, CK describe deployment. Oh, got to spell describe right. <laughs> I'll put it, let me see, describe. I did tab on that deployment, and then it was a front end deployment, right? So you go to that and you look at describe, and you can scroll through that and look for the actual image, and there's the image. Now, with that said, if you're looking for an image, you might want to grep. That can be a lot easier. So if you do a grep dash dash I, or you know, you don't worry about the capitals, right? You say I, and then go image colon, and that one basically give me oh right there, pulls it out without me having to search. So that's busy eight eight eight. That is actually the box right there. So it's two ways using describe or actually going into the code. And I actually use grep. And it says, well, why isn't it working? Well, most likely it doesn't exist. That makes sense. Okay, cool. All right, there you can create a new deployment using this YAML file. So we're gonna, it says there's a YAML file there. So we're gonna look at YAML. Now you have the option of, of several um, um, uh, editors and we're gonna, three actually, and we're gonna talk about those in a moment. So but I'm gonna use Vim or VI cause that's, you know, that was the, a new, the oldest one. And so I'll go ahead in here and take a look at the, this definition right here. And there it is. And we're going to look at it. And there's a number of problems with this definition right here. One is kind is not capitalized. So I'm going to correct that. And of course, busy box 888 is not going to work. So I can hit I here and I can come down here and capitalize deployment. Let me, and then I can come down here and fix my busy box. So you're going to have code on the exam that you're going to need to fix. I'll tell you that right now. And I hit escape, colon, WQ to save. And then um, I can go ahead and now create this deployment. So I can go K apply or K create dash F. Then I'm going to use tab completion so I don't have to type all that in. And it's going to create that deployment for me. And I check that. And there you have it. Good. Next. Mm -hmm. All right, with that said, it's going to create a new deployment with the below attributes using your own 
deployment definition file. So I'm actually going to want to basically just create this deployment. There's something I want to show you here, a little trick here that you need to use. And lots of times when you get code, if you can, you want to use imperative language. We'll explain what imperative is, but pretty much that's command language. But you can't always use imperative language. Many times you need to go in there and you need to um, uh, create a YAML file that you'll you'll add to. And one way to do that is you use the run um, dry run command. So let's go and do that right now. So I'll come along here and I'm going to create a deployment. So I'll go click create. And then what I want to do is deployment. And I don't want to actually type names in. I want to copy and paste them because if I go through the exam and I actually um, do an entire problem and I've fat fingered a problem, something wrong, right? Then I've, I've got a problem because I did <laughs> I'm going to miss it because I fat fingered it and called it the wrong thing. And then I want to put an image in here. So I can just hit tab because it knows the image is supposed to come next. So I'm using that leaning on tab a lot. And then I'm going to once again cut and paste this image in. All right. There you go. And then I'm going to have a number of replicas. I'm going to 2 2 R L P and I hit tab. It knows that. And I want three replicas. And now I don't want to run it yet because I may have to do something with that. So I'll go dash dash dry run equals client, right? Dash O, o YAML. O YAML. And you can go dash and then YAML, but I like to put them together. So I type YAML. And then I'm going to use this little greater than sign to pipe it into something. And I'll just call what deployment deploy dot YAML, something like that, right? And I do that. And then I'm going to VI it, right? Let's take a look at it or I can cat it either one, and there it is, there's that code. So this is gonna happen a lot where you, 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 you're you gonna to have to change a YAML file. And as opposed to trying to type it all out by hand or pull it from the Kubernetes doc, doc, you can get a lot of it from doing this little dry, dry run trick. And then you can make your changes. And if you're not sure what changes to make, then you can go to the docs and pull those changes in, okay? Now, with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this WQ. And I'm going to run it now. So, okay, create, force this, depth, and then um, tab it, complete, and then run it. Okay. And there you go. I created my pod. So that's some tricks there. And and that's, oh, I must have made a mistake. Oh, didn't like my image. Let's see what I got here. Did I make, did I fat finger something? Let's let's take a look and let's, let's do it. Uh, let's take a look at the YAML file. And we won't spend a whole lot of time on this since it's, uh, but well, we will see if we can see if I made a mistake. Image says front end. Right. Yeah, I blew that, didn't I? So let's do this. Let's escape this. WQ. Let's go K delete. Um, deployment. Let's see what we let me see. And then um HTTP uh, tab. Sorry. I'm going to go ahead and just delete it. And I'm going to go back one and see what I screwed up. Let's see. Huh. And you're oh, creating. Oh, and yeah. Yeah, look at that. I screwed it up, didn't I? So let me come along here and fix that. All right. So you can see I'm using my history to tab back and fix that. Now, here's something that's really important, too. When you take this exam, check your work. Okay. Because it, and so you want to make sure that you look it up to make sure it, it, it actually was the right image and everything like that. So check your work. And so I'd gotten that wrong. So now I redid it. And so I can go ahead and recreate that. There you go. And then now let's see if we can go ahead and run it now. Okay, uh, create. Dash F. Ammo. All right, cross your fingers. Yeah, there you go. Thank you so much for your help on that, guys. All right, so that's an example of how you do it. Now, one more thing you want to look at before we end this is that, that when you're taking the exam, and I should have showed this earlier, is that you actually have the opportunity, and we'll try again. I want to show you this real quick, and I won't do it, belabor it too much more. Let's take a look at um, practicing namespaces, for example. The other thing is, is really good about um, Moonshaw's uh, site is when you're taking an exam and you don't know quite what to do, he actually does give you hints at the top. So I just want to illustrate that real quick. So if you're going through this exam 
and you're not quite sure how to do something, he's got hints and solutions. So that can help you uh, through through it as well. And he's got some nice little tricks here where he actually removes the headers on this one and he does the line count. That's one of the, some of the things you wanna do. So he's throwing those things in there. They're gonna be useful for you on the exam, okay? So I wanna share that to you real quick and we'll say goodbye to Mumshan Manabath as far as his exam prep is concerned. All right, cool. All right, with that said, um, we'll continue. I want to talk a little bit about Code Cloud, especially if you guys are interested in becoming DevOps engineers. This is really a site that I love that you could just live on for the rest of your life. I mean, he's got some great stuff on here. One of the things I really love about his site are the playgrounds. So I want to take a look. So this is for DevOps specifically. And the site that Moonshot Minabot has is codecloud.com. And it's about $200 a year to be a part of this, this uh, site. But if you're doing DevOps, it's well worth it. And one of the reasons that makes it well worth it are his playgrounds. So if you're doing, um, uh, you're, you're wanting to actually try something out then he'll have all these playgrounds that you can actually go in and you can build stuff with. He's got Google Cloud, Azure, AWS. And then if you're doing Linux, he's got quite a few distributions there. If Kubernetes, he's got a whole set of Kubernetes here, the multi-node as well. Then if you're gonna do Kubernetes playgrounds, a few things there. Um, if you're doing container playgrounds, he's got Podman, Docker, you know, build packs. If you're doing HashiCorp, which I really encourage you guys to learn Terraform, he's got the HashiCorp bar, bar, which we'll most likely use when we prep for the HashiCorp uh, certification. And uh, GitHub and, of course, you know, uh, GitLab, which I like, and Jenkins. So if you're doing a lot of Jenkins or Git, you know, he's got uh, playgrounds that you can actually learn and le learn from and infrastructure, Ansible, Chef, you know, cross-plane. So all these, uh, you know, if you, I tell people, you know, the diff most difficult thing about coding is setting up the environment. And so if you have an environment that's all ready to go and program in, it makes it a lot easier. Golang, Java, Kafka, Maven, Node, JS, Python, all here in these environments. Yeah. So he's got a lot of environments and he's expanding. When I looked at this last, when I looked at this last time, he actually um, didn't have as many. So he's been adding a lot. So it's nice to see, it's nice to see these additions. Um, uh, and then continue to work on his site. So with that said, that's a good one. Another thing he has uh, is playgrounds. So, um, and by the way, I don't work for him. I, I don't even know him. So, but I do like his site quite a bit. So, and he's got a DevOps playground, a Kubernetes playground, Linux program, infrastructure playground, programming playground. So depending on what you want to do, if you're interested in Kubernetes, he's got the whole cycle of course that you should take. He also at the very end of it has a DevOps interview for that as well. Okay, cool. And with that said, um, Let's look at one more. He also has something that's close to my heart, and that is the code cloud engineer. So this is a problem that we find in my uh, area. And that problem is that um, you get people and they get a certification. Okay, well, Mike, I got this certification, but I can't get a job. I mean, I need real life experience, real hands-on experience, and all of us know that. And one of the things he's tried to do is create what's called a cloud cloud engineer. It's where it's like a little uh, company that you kind of join, and it's kind of a fictitious company, but he gives you real problems. So every day you have a new problem to work on, and it increases in complexity, and you learn more and more. And I guess the idea of you getting this kind of mock company, you can put this on your resume. Now, I, I'm going to tell you, I think the thing that will eventually fix this is having AI involved, right? So these AI assistants are coming in education where they know you as a as a personality and they know what you know and you're talking with them and chatting with them and having an interaction with them because of, we know that learning is emotional. But I think it's a really cool idea and it's a lot of things that we're struggling with. I, I mean, it's every day someone comes to me that can't get a job because they may have a cert or need to get certs, but they don't have experience. They're looking for that job experience. And this is one way that education is starting to, sh to try to solve this. I'm going to tell you right now that AI is about to blow the doors off of education. And not only will be coding be very different in the next five years, education itself will be very different in the next five years. All right, with that said, I'm going to give you my 10 tips. But before I move on, are there any questions so far? I went through a lot of stuff. OK, all right. No problem, Ron. Anything, anything else? Oh, sorry. I think I typed in the wrong place. 
Do you guys have any questions so far? None for oh, me. So, okay, so I, oh, thank you for uh, commenting. I, I did get one comment here. That's where's the PDF? So let me go ahead and put that back in the. Uh, what happens sometimes is uh, if you join late and and I put the PDF in there, it doesn't show. So let me go ahead and put the PDF in again. Give me a moment. Let's stick this in there. Okay, George, I just, I'm putting the PDF in right now. Let's see what we got here. My chat's kind of doing something funny. Give me a moment. Huh. That's weird. Let me put this in here. Hold on, let me first stick this in here. Okay, can you guys see the um, um, the, the I just pasted it in the. Um, can you guys see the um, link? I think I run might have put yeah. it in there. Okay, you guys see the link? Okay, let me see. Cool, that's the link. So, guys, go ahead and use that link and download that. Now, I think that I just got a a comment here. Krishna said, how to future-proof your career? What can you learn with AI for X, X um, generative AI has been trending? You mentioned quantum AI, right? And how to get started uh, on this? Maybe you can do a separate session. So yes, uh, do future-proof your AI, um, your career. First thing is to do is to become a prompt engineer, okay? And learn prompt engineering. We're gonna do some prompt engineering today. AI, uh, quantum, uh, quantum computing is about five years away, but on the heels of AI, that revolution will come quantum computing. And a lot of people are starting to pour money into it now. And I, I have two sessions on quantum computing coming. So feel free to join those sessions. Um, I, I've sent out a lot of uh, uh, communication about that. I guess I'll, I, maybe I should to the group, I should send out the uh, newest schedule so everybody can see what, what's coming. But I did talk about that at the beginning of the session. So catch the video please and take a look at that so thanks for that question as well yeah all of us are concerned about how to future proof our careers and and the way to do it is to become is, is to ride with it to run with it to learn as much as possible to become a prompt engineer and to use that to sculpt and architect and code about 61 percent of code now going on to github is ai generated so there's been a huge ado adoption of this when it comes to coding with that said, first uh, tip, Mike's number one tip as far as um, the Kubernetes exam is get a sandbox. This is a hands-on exam, so practice, practice, practice. You have three good options, Minikube, CodeCloud, and Killer Coder. You can try those three, and I have links to all of those. Okay, that's tip number one. Tip number two is use an alias, and there's really only one alias I use, and that's K, K equals cube cuddle. Uh, excuse me, cube cuddle, yeah. And it's already there. You don't even have to put the alias in. I, I just hit K and it works. So that's great. Now, there are a lot of other uh, aliases, but I'm going to tell you they really don't do me much good. If you spend all your time programming aliases, you won't get through the exam. But if you do this for a living and you enjoy working with Kubernetes a lot, aliases can save you a lot of time. How do you know what aliases there are out there? Well, it's really simple. Just open up chat GTP. We're going to start to use chat GPT right now and show you how useful it is. So one thing you're doing is just open up chat GDP. I do use chat GDP four, which I pay for, okay, which is, you know, $20 a month. Um, but it's worth it because chat GDP four, GDP four is a lot more accurate than three. And you just put something in there like, hey, show, give me common Kubernetes aliases and it will crank all the aliases out for you. So as opposed to me spending a lot of time trying to find out um, different aliases, let's see, it will do that for me. Well, okay, so this is actually showing me how to install the alias. So um, one thing you want to look at is when you work with this stuff is once you start to get it into 
um, a, a new prompt and you start working with it, it will remember what you're saying. So it will start getting what you want. And so you will continue to work through it. So we'll work through a few more of these. But when I was with, when I worked with it last time, I said, give me common aliases. It actually spit these out for me, which I find if you're working with Kubernetes on a daily basis, some of these aliases can be extremely helpful. But um, if you're trying to put them all in an exam, I, I wouldn't spend the time doing it. Just use your K, K, K common. That's what I do. KB equals kube, uh, kube cuddle. Here's another one. Give the common Kubernetes short names. This is something I do use on the exam. So tip number two, I, I use aliases. I use the K for my alias. The only one I use, but I use tabbing a lot and I use short names. So you saw me do that in the examples earlier. If you want to know what those are, just go into um, ChatDP and say, give the most common Kubernetes short name. So let's see if that works. And when you go into Kubernetes, it's constantly changing. So um, I haven't done this one in a while. So let's see what it gives me when I do this. There you go. Now it's giving me all the short names. So I don't have to go look that up somewhere. I can, and you can look it up in the help menu, by the way, but I don't have to do that. I just type it in chat GDP and it gives it to me. This will become more powerful as we continue our journey. Now it kind of knows what I want. So let's keep going. All right, uh, and we showed how to use this before. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up my um, uh, Minikube. I actually use Minikube a lot for, uh, cause I have, a, I actually bought a Mac specifically to work with um, Kubernetes, believe it or not. And so I have Minikube installed. And just here's an example, how you're gonna use K instead of Kube Cuddle. And you're gonna use, I put CR and hit tab. Here comes my create, as opposed to typing in namespace, right? I'm going to go NS. I use that short name. And then that's going to create a namespace. Basically, let's go ahead and take a look first and make sure there's no namespaces there. Uh, there's my namespace. I don't have the DevOps namespace, so let's create that. K get K create namespace. And then we're going to do DevOps namespace. There you go. And once again, I'm using those short names and then feel K get NS for namespace. You can see it saves me a few characters, but that adds up. And then you start thinking in those short characters and it, it really makes your programming speed along pretty rapidly. We already did uh, creating uh, deployments in the previous example, so we won't cover those. But just once again, you actually got to see there the use of namespaces and the, the use of um, short names and the use of that K cuddle. So that's something you want to use on the exam. All right, with that said, a number three know your editor. So how do I know what editors I can use for the CKA exam? I just go to chat GDP and I go, hey, what exam, what editors can I use? So I put that into the prompt and chat GDP will come back and tell me what editors I can use for the CKA exam. Now there may be more, but these are the three editors that I'm aware of. BIM, Nano, and Emacs. Of course, BIM is one of the ones that are like one of the oldest ones. And then you may not know how to use BIM, right? So you can say, well, Give me, uh, give me BIM commands. And so you type that in and it's going to give you a bunch of BIM commands. So you don't, may not know any BIM commands, but it's going to tell you what they are. All right, there you go. And so as opposed to running off to a tutorial, trying to learn how to do something, you can actually add chat TP to do that for you. And so it's a little bit verbose, so I'll stop it and let's continue. Hey, so uh, give me uh, some uh, Vim exercises to solve. And so that actually might show you how to use Vim. There you go. There you go. It'll give you a bunch of uh, Vim exercises to solve. Yeah, there you go. Appending, you know, moving, things you might do with Vim. And so uh, even if you were a content creator like myself and you might want to create a course for your company, you might go in there and ask ChatGTP to create an entire course in Vim to make people Vim experts. So that's one way you can actually use ChatGTP to help you with your editor, learning your editor for exam, make sure you know your editor really well. Okay. Good. All right, that was that tip. Let's go look at the next tip right there. And so uh, you can see I was just typing in chat GDP, give me helpful commands, it was giving me helpful commands and give me more advanced examples, gives me more advanced examples. So there you go. Another thing you wanna be aware of the exam, tip number four is that you wanna make sure that you are in the right configuration. So there's about six or seven configurations that you can be in. And um, 
and, and it's going to tell you, uh, for example, you'll see on the screen when you're taking the exam, kube config use context cluster three. So you want to make sure that you, you're in cluster three when you're doing the test. You may be going real fast and you may forget to put the cluster you're actually in. And if you do it in the wrong, wrong cluster, guess what? You're not going to pass that that one. Now, one thing that I ran into a lot is that when I was taking the exam, I was moving kind of fast. And I would forget what cluster I was in because sometimes it'd be the same, ne next problem would be the same cluster. So I click the next problem, what looks like the same cluster. So I, sometimes I would forget what cluster I was in. So there's another command that you're gonna wanna use and basically just k config, right? Tab on that, get context. And that tells you what cluster you're in, right? There you go. And I'm, I'm in the Minikube cluster in this one, of course. But I used that on the exam a few times. Just sometimes I'd be going fast and I'd forget what cluster I was in. I would check the cluster and make sure I was in that cluster. OK, so this makes sure you do that. All right, cool. That is another exam tip, number four. Number five, use copy and paste. So some exams can be weird. Some of the names can be weird or long or numbers. So you don't want to go on the exam and try to type every, all, the, all the names in because you may fat finger something. And so if you fat finger something in and you just have the wrong name, you're, 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 you're gonna fail that particular um, exam question. So make sure you're copying and pasting the exam questions in. Now you may wanna practice. And so you can go into chat DDP and say, hey, create some CKA problems with long names that I need to cut and paste with. So pretty much tell chat DDP what you want it to do. Bring, bring chat DDP back up. And it will actually create some problems for you to practice with, with long names. There you go. All right, it's pretty verbose and it's going to give you everything you want. And we'll let that um, churn away for a while. And I'll, I'll continue with the next next statement. And one of the things I want to say is that sometimes you'll ask it for problems, right? but there'll be some setup code that you need to make those problems work. And so all you need to do in chat DDP, it says, give me the Kubernetes uh, setup code for the pro above problems so I can run the commands as given. So if you've asked Kubernetes to give you an example of a CKA question, and it does, and you try to run it and it won't work, it may be because you have to run some setup code. And I found that all the time. So many times it would give me something, but not the names, in, you know, in a namespace that hadn't been created yet, I would say, give me the setup code and I run the setup code to get set up. So that's how we'd use ChatGP to do that. So there you go. And uh, if you write something like this, you know, and it's given you a problem to do and you, you don't quite know how to solve it, or you have a, a Kubernetes problem you don't know how to solve, you can just ask um, ChatGDP to give you the solution. Okay, so one of the issues that I've run into with ChatGDP is sometimes I'll ask it to give me an imperative command solution. And sometimes there's not an imperative command solution for the problem I've asked it for. And ChatGP, regardless, will try to give me an imperative command anyway. So you need to still be the architect here and understand there's certain problems that you're going to have to use declarative language with. And ChatGP, once again, if it doesn't know the answer, will try to come up with one. I just want to keep that in mind. All right. You can see it's just cranking out code left and right. It does that really well. All right, with that said, um, let's look at the, let's see if we got another tip here. Once again, we'll skip over to the tip number six. Don't get stuck on a question. Keep the weights in mind. So pace yourself. So one thing I can say to ChatGDP is create three, three questions, CKA mock exam, having varying weights per question. So let's do that. So if I go into uh, ChatGDP and I ask it to create three questions, There you go. It'll crank out three questions that I can practice that had different weights. And you can practice these questions. And they had a 15%, 12%, and a 8%. Uh, now, Maybe you don't like those ranges because maybe those aren't realistic ranges. So I could say, well, I could say change the ranges. 
between um, two and 10. And what it will do, it will go in there and change your ranges. So lots of times you're going to be talking to this. It'll give you something and you want to change it just a little bit. And you say, well, change this. And see, now it's giving me the weights between 2 and 10, 2, 5, and 10. Okay. With that said, maybe I don't know the solutions to these. Well, give me the solutions. And I'll give you the Kubernetes solutions. Jeff, can, uh, can you ask your question again? I wasn't quite sure what you were asking. This guy can see and works. What's, what is... Uh, what do you want to know, Jeff? I'm more than glad to answer it. I think your question was, can CN works, Jeff? What was, can you clarify that for me? Huh. I, I, I'm sorry, Jeff. I still don't quite get your question. It was based on your URL and chat. Can see and it works. Oh, 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 you're just saying you got the URL. Okay, great. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> you, so you got it. Oh, good. <laughs> sorry about that. So I wasn't quite sure what the answer would be. So I went ahead and asked chat TDP to solve these problems for me and it gave me solutions. And you can go in and start running these problems and you you'll see that it'll run. I won't do them now. I just want to show you that, that that once again, if you have a problem, you don't know how to solve it. I do this all the time with questions. I'm putting them into chat TGP and I'm asking for solutions and answers. And it saves me a tremendous amount of time. Chat TGP is not always right. So you want to test them out. But uh, for the most part, it's getting better. So, which, and like I said, last week, well, last week I ran hundreds of lines of chat GDP, of Kubernetes, excuse me, only one was wrong. So with that said, that was there for those weighted questions. Don't get stuck. And I go through a few questions here, and I'm going to skip over those real quick for time's sake, because we only got about half an hour. And then I'm going to talk. We've already talked about uh, uh, using um, the run, uh, dry run to generate um, uh, um, YAML code and then, and then using um, uh, uh, basically, uh, and, and fixing that code or adding to that code, something you'll need to do. Okay, with that said, let's move on. And here's the next tip, tip number seven. Uh, you are not alone. Basically, you can go to Kubernetes.io, go to GitHub, uh, or to Kubernetes blog. So I have primarily used Kubernetes.io docs when I do this exam. And we'll go there right now. And uh, there is a, basically, there's a um, Firefox uh, a little uh, um, icon on, on the main screen when you take the Kubernetes exam. So you can actually go here. And for example, you may want to learn about, you may have to grab some YAML code on persistent volume. Okay. And you'll go there and you may have to, uh, you know, make some modifications or go down and, and look at some persistent volume code and copy that yaml so you you this is a skill set you'll have to master and be able to do and what uh mom's have money best course is going to do is going to go through various examples where you actually do this and you gain the skill set okay so something you'll need to do and you'll have this available during the exam so you and you want to use it and you want to know when to use it and you want to be good at it so you're not going to have time to research and learn things during the exam I mean, you can look at this document, but you need to be really fairly versed with this document. Another thing in this document, they have a cheat sheet, okay? And the cheat sheet basically is something you should be very familiar with as well. And they have a number of commands that you should know how to work, okay? There you go. All right, that was number seven. And once again, you want to be uh, very familiar with these design patterns and, and, and things that you commonly do uh, in uh, Kubernetes code. And I create a persistent volume, create a persistent volume claim, and then attach it to a pod, those type of things that you'll do. And you'll, once again, if you go through Monsters MindVev's course, or you just ask, ask ChatGDP, how do you do this? It'll explain it to you as well. All right, with that said, tip number seven. And, and that's what the CKO is an open book exam. You have access to the below resources. We talked about that one. 
All right, let's move through seven. Tip number eight, to increase speed, use imperative commands as much as possible. And we saw that at the very beginning, we actually used a dry run command to create a YAML file, and then we add it to that YAML file. It's a skill set you need to know that you'll be doing quite a bit during the exam. And what is the difference between an imperative command and a declarative command? A de imperative command pretty much is uh, command line stuff. Like you can see kube, cuddle, run, nginx, uh, Im image, image, nginx, where a declarative man, a declarative approach is a YAML. So if you're doing a lot of Kubernetes at work, you're probably writing a lot of YAML files. If you're doing some debugging, you're probably running a lot of imperative, okay? With that said, if you wanna know what kind of comparative commands there are out there, then you can go into chat GDP without going anywhere else, or you can go into you know your help files and you can go, okay, let's go to chat GDP. Clear that and say, give me a list of Kubernetes imperative commands. And if you spell anything wrong, it doesn't matter. ChatGDP tries to correct your spelling for you. And there you go. It's going to show you a bunch of imperative commands. Yeah. And you can see, you know, you're working with this, how this can tremendously speed up your study time. It does mine, let me tell you. With that said, and I already mentioned the dry run to get the YAML, so that's a good tip. Let's go to the next tip real quick here. Here's a list of imperative commands that ChatGDP spit out for me, so you can go through and learn those as well. Okay, and then um, I mentioned use uh, Udemy Code Cloud, CK course, and the Ultimate Certified Kubernetes. So we mentioned that in the in the earlier exam, uh, uh, at the very beginning, that Monsha Money Best CK course is the course you actually want to take to prep for this exam. The Ultimate Certificate, certificate Kubernetes, Certified Kubernetes Administrator CK mock exam series will really get you up to speed as far as if you want to clip through the exam very rapidly, master these and you'll you'll be ready. So these are two good tips. But my tip as well, as well with this is a 10 that I've given you, but to also, um, you know, lean on chat GDP to do all that heavy lifting as opposed to going from site to site, trying to learn this and learn that. Use chat GDP to help you learn the content. OK, and then once again, here's that study um, uh, exam study um, suggested learning path that I've given you. If you do this, you will do well on the exam. Now let's move to the next topic. And that final number one, number 10 is to use ChatGDP to create a learning adventure. If you get bored and you want to have fun with it, you can actually use ChatGDP to create a learning adventure of your content. And I tried this every time I create an exam, I'm getting closer and closer and creating more and more learning content. I'm going to give you a lot of tips today for doing that. Now, let me tell you, we are approaching what I call the holy grail of education. And that holy grail of education is where... Um, we have these chat systems interacting with us, okay, as people. And the reason I say that right now we have to do a lot of programming to make this happen. What tools like chat GDP, we're going to be able to get away from that and be able to have these characters that we actually interact with in real time. So it's not a typically a scripted like environment. All right. They're going to be able to figure out what you know, and they're going to be able to bring that content to you in a way that makes it entertaining and easy to learn. We run into this problem. We've had this problem for years where you sit kids in front of video games and they play for hours and hours and hours and hours, right? Yeah, auto chat GDP, yes. That that will actually create an entire environment for you. Thank you very much, Chris, Krishna. And and you actually can, uh, there's a lot, if you go to YouTube, you can find a lot of sites that will help you um, uh, do an auto chat GDP. Thank you for that comment. With that said, um, uh, the holy grail here is creating a learning environment that's fun for kids to learn in. And this is going to blow the bl basically blow the sack off of education the way it is today. So that said, and you can you can actually start creating that environment if you'd like through a prompt like this, create uh, a sequence of fifty two topics associate with associate and associated labs that can be used to create a comprehensive Kubernetes administrator ka hands-on study guide. Start from pods, going from going to advanced topics, include both Kubernetes fundamentals and specialized topics such as Kubernetes architecture, containing networks, multi-container pods, advanced scheduling, authentication, authorization, and troubleshooting. So if you take that, yeah, bye-bye customer care. That's right. I heard that, um, thank you, Krishna, for that comment as well. I heard that IBM just laid off 7,000 uh, employees uh, due to the use of uh, tools like ChatGDP. 
right? That's true for back office stuff. With that said, let's bring this up and throw this prompt in there and see what we get. And what it will do, it'll crank that list out for you of all those learning, learning, learning um, topics. There you go. And when I did that, uh, and I'm, I'll go ahead and let this crank, you can see it's cranking. So when I ask it to, when I did that, you can see I got these 52 topics that I could actually throw into a learning environment. So use the following log line. So I actually created, I asked ChatTTV, give me a log line for an adventure, a space adventure. So then I said, I took these 52 and threw it in the log line. So I said, use the following log line, log line set in a futuristic city of orion a male novice engineer named alex and alita a female military officer who was ai enhanced journey through the complex world of kubernetes finding love and becoming heroes as they use their shared expertise to thwart a catastrophic cyber threat proving that their combined skills can not only manage the city's advanced system, but also save the world from impending doom to write a story around the following topics. And then I throw those 52 in, and guess what? It writes the story. Now, let me go ahead and st stop real quick here, because you're starting to see images. Where the heck are these images coming from? And so let me show you where I got the images from. So I'm going to take this log line. OK. And so if you're familiar with script writing or stories, there's always a log line. It's kind of the story that you write your, your, your script around. And if you go to, um, let me go ahead and bring up Microsoft um, Edge. Sorry, guys, give me a moment. Okay, cool. Give me a moment. Edge is coming up. You can see Microsoft Edge has incorporated ChatGDP in its Bing um, search engine, and also has incorporated uh, Dali E. So if you're on here and you hit more creative, that's going to give you the image creation. And so if you go draw, comment, and just put that whole whole thing in there and ask it to draw that, it's going to give you some images, OK? Now, we are around the corner, not just from image creation, but also around the corner to video to text, from text to video. So a lot of people are experimenting with this, and they're starting to come out where you just put a text line in or a, a, a log line in, and you get video. And so in the future, not very far away, we're going to be having um, uh, videos created, movies created by AI, uh, and you'll be basically the architect of those. And so that's given me these two people in this futuristic city that eventually have a love relationship. So there you have it. Now you can extend these images now using a, a, a lot of the programs coming out in uh, AI image creation will allow you to extend, change, grab these characters, turn them into 3D. A lot of technology is coming out in the AI educational realm. So there you go. That's one example of how you did that. And these are what I did. Same thing, just use G Bing to generate these. Threw these topics in here, built these log lines. It wrote stories around each one of the topics, right? And then started to create this... Um, uh, divide the story into logical section and start giving me pods. So this is just it's one of these futuristic cities that has pods. And and then, so I had it write, uh, separate this into more. So you can ask, ask for more. If you go in the wrong direction, you can ask to do it again. And so now Alex, a novice engineer in a futuristic city of Orion, begins his journey in managing the city's advanced Kubernetes-based systems. He navigates through the pods, the basic building blocks of applications running the city's infrastructure. As Alex gets more involved in his job, he meets Alita, a military officer who is an AI-enhanced. They cross paths while working on managing replica sets, deployments, namesex services in Orion's complex system. It's pretty cool. And so you be, you know, if you're teaching this to somebody, you can create a whole story about this relationship that builds. It turns out there's a if you know about um, building movies, there is something called petting the dog. And so the petting the dog in this scenario is where um, Alex really has a prejudice against AI enhanced people. And to his relationship with um, 
with um, Aleta, he sees her in a different light and actually changes as a person, becomes a better person. So that's a, that's called petting the dog when it comes to building that. Now, once you've done all this, you can now start integrating the, uh, the, the, um, the code so they can actually start solving these problems. So, so part of that story is Alex, a novice engineer, starts his journey in a future city learning about pods. And so, you know, create three pod questions, each with increasing difficulty that relate to the story that would be found on the CK hands-on exam. So it starts right away. Uh, Alex needs to create a pod that runs a single container using, you know, uh, Nginx 1.17. The pod must be must be named Nginx pod, and it should be in the default namespace. So that's the solution to that. This would be a cool way to sort. Uh, Krishna says this would be a, a cool way to sort of like creating a, a mind map for teaching kids early on. Absolutely. You got it, Krishna. And you could even ask it. Um, there is a plotting feature, I believe, that's in one of the um, plugins in chat GDP. So you can ask it to do the mind map for you right there. Excellent. So you can see um, I had a lot of fun with this. And I continue to get more advanced building this story around the different things that they were doing. And it's all in the um, PDF that you guys can go through. OK. One of the things I also want to mention as part of this technology is Adobe Firefly. So if you create, you find an image that you really like, that you create it in Bing, you can actually re use Firefly to remove a character, and it'll give you the background that he's behind him. So I don't know how it does that, but it figures it out through AI. Or you can extend, um, if you like scrolling images, you're building videos, creating scrolling images, you can actually use Firefly to extend the scene for you. And here you can see he's arriving in Pod City, uh, our hero here, as he learns more about Kubernetes. And so once again, you can expand the scenario. Alex, a novice engineer, starts his journey in his futuristic city in the advanced city of Orion, an emerging tech hub in the year 2023. Well, we should change that date, right? Alex begins his journey as a novice engineer. He is a keen master. He is keen to the master of the art of Kubernetes, and he has begun his journey. And so he begins to work through building and working on pods as he goes to this adventure. So if you get bored, and you want to have some fun, or you have difficulty learning a concept, create a story around it and, and have, your, um, have your adventurers solve that problem. So you can see, and it's so easy to do in chat GDP. How long does it take me to generate these stories? Just put the, t the prompt in there and they automatically just come out and you're the architect of this story. So if it's not quite right, you just ask it again. And so what I'm saying is what used to take me in education months to do, all right, I can do in a weekend with this technology. And that's why I say knowledge, those knowledge creators have, their careers have been exposed by this technology and it's only getting better as people pour more and more money into it. So there you go. And so I, and I went on and I wrote stories and I wrote pods and I wrote, wrote adventures. And, and once again, you might want to use this not for everything, but maybe something you're having difficulty in mastering. Maybe you have a difficulty in mastering ingress. And so you want to write an entire adventure around ingress to help you learn that and get emotionally involved because learning is emotionally based learning. This is good. So, uh, uh, Morris Enough says, this is good timing as I am about to teach adjunct programming classes <laughs> at a local university. Absolutely. Please use this. And uh, my wife's an adjunct teacher in the history department, and, and they're struggling because people are using uh, chat GDP to write papers. And so they don't want them to do that. But there's another way to handle this, and that is to have your class write an adventure story about a historical scene to actually use these technologies to expand their understanding of the situation. So we're actually going the opposite way in her classes as opposed to, oh, no, don't touch it, don't touch it, because everyone doesn't want to do that, right? And they see the new thing. and uh, But just do the opposite, embrace the technology. And what can I use to actually learn more? So I appreciate your your, your comment, more is enough. Yeah, absolutely, you get what I'm talking about, absolutely. Yeah, so here's another one. Chris says, how does the licensing and copyright over chat to be generated content work? Can you publish or share content? Right now, yes. <laughs> yes, 
<laughs> now, with that said, I, I mean, uh, challenges are coming. If you're using Adobe stuff to generate um, these images, they say they're, all their stuff is copyright free on the images. If you're using Bing, it's coming right out of Microsoft and they have a whole image set that you're using. So they're not worried about copyright concerning all the knowledge that's involved. I mean, this is all coming from the web. So I'm sure there could be some challenges, but I'm, it's, so we're, we're going to see this all play out in court right now it's not being considered as copyright you have full you have full um use of the, the material yeah yep chat tv can give facts and students can still learn critical thinking yeah absolutely thank you more enough absolutely all right yes so uh this is just one of those things that's really fun to do um for me i just had a blast with it and um I'm using this more and more. I keep trying to come up with a full story. That I want to put up a Udemy course, and I want a full story like this that someone goes through and actually learns some material. So each each time I get closer to it, when we do the AWS um, networking, you'll see see a lot of this as well. And um, I've actually been working on that course that we're getting ready to present in, in two weeks. Uh, so I'm excited about that. So pretty much, uh, this is the redo. Um, I do have a few more links for you guys if you're looking for more experience. GitHub has tons and tons of exercises that you can actually go to. Here's a link right here. I'll, I'll go ahead and bring this up. Um, here's the CKAD. Look at that if you're prepping for that one. Um, this is kind of what I was talking about. You can go down here and they've got a lot of questions that you can go of core concepts, for example. And you can just, there's your cheat sheet and everything, but you can actually start asking you questions, create a namespace called my namespace. And a, and a pod with Nginx called Nginx on the namespace. And it's actually gonna show you the solution. And what you can do is you can just bring up your editor. For example, here's my uh, little mini, um, my editor. And then yeah, I got a little, my little uh, mini cube in there. And so you can just start you know, creating stuff, you know, and, and working through these different, um, um, different things. I, I won't work the whole thing, but you can, but you can test yourself and then see if you've got the right answer, but this is how you might use your, Use your editor to do that. I'm. I'll show you my editor's working, of course. Yeah, it'll create the namespace and then it'll go ahead and give you the answers. I won't spend the time typing all those in, but you know, you would want to work through these. So you can actually walk through these examples. I think GitHub has just tons and tons of practice questions that you can just walk through and look at different YAML and build Kubernetes all day long. And if you go to those links that I put here in the, and at the end, you can see some of those GitHub tools. Okay. All right, so that's was the redo. So if you missed it, um, I, I'm I'm happy to have redone it, and I'll put this video out as well. I know I did go fast, but we only had an hour and a half. We have six minutes left for questions. 